Hey everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're gonna create several amazing transitions together in Adobe After Effects from scratch. And so you don't need any prior knowledge in After Effects to follow along with this video tutorial. You will learn great tips, tricks and techniques in Adobe After Effects. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know from creating your first composition in Adobe After Effects to render your final composition for creating your first video transition. You will learn how to create shapes, how to add keyframes and convert them to easy ease to have smoother animations, how to use graph editor to tweak your keyframes for creating professional animations, how to export your transitions in video format with alpha channel and much more. So by the end of this video tutorial, you will be able to create and render any type of transitions using Adobe After Effects and finally you will be able to use them in video editing programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut and so on. I hope you enjoy watching this video tutorial as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. So if you are ready to have fun and if you are eager to learn how to create amazing, professional and colorful video transitions, join me now and I'll see you in lesson 1. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we're gonna create a great triangle transition in Adobe After Effects. So without wasting time, let's get started. At first, we need to create a composition in After Effects. So from the menu, choose Composition, New Composition, or press Ctrl N. Let's give it a name, for example, Triangle. In preset section, enter 1920 for the height and 1080 for the composition width. If you want to change these numbers manually, simply uncheck lock aspect ratio and change them separately. For the pixel aspect ratio, I choose square pixels. Okay. In frame rate section, for motion graphics projects, I suggest to use 30 frames per second. And set the duration to 200 frames. And finally, for the background, let's choose a black color for now. Okay, as you can see, here we have triangle composition in project window. Okay, now I want to create a triangle shape. So let's use this polygon tool. Okay, now hold down shift key and click and drag to draw a polygon shape here. Okay, now in polyester one section, in polyester path one, let's change points to three to create a triangle shape. For outer radius, let's enter 370. And also let's change the stroke width to 150. To change the color, we can use this color option in a stroke one section. Or from this top toolbar, click on this stroke color button. And let's enter this code, FFE400, a yellow color. Okay, let's move it to the center of the composition using this selection tool. Okay, great. Now select the layer, hit the return key or press the enter key. And let's change its name to, for example, triangle one. And also let's change the layer color to, for example, yellow. Okay, great. I want to rotate this triangle shape around the center point and as you can see the anchor point of this triangle shape is not at the center of the shape and I have to move it. So hold down Ctrl and Alt keys and press the home button to move the anchor point to the center of the object. And now let's move the shape to the center of the composition by pressing Ctrl and home buttons. Okay, now I want to rotate this shape so let's load the rotation property by pressing the R key. Now if I rotate it, as you can see, it doesn't rotate correctly. Let me show you why do I say that. So let's create a circle shape using this ellipse tool. Change the stroke color to, for example, blue. Click and then hold the shift key and drag to create a perfect circle shape. Okay, now press the V key to switch to selection tool. Change the stroke value to, for example, 20. Okay. Let's rename the layer to circle. Let's change the size property. Change its value to, for example, this number. Let's move it to the center. And let's change the size to 1050. Okay, now as you can see, its anchor point is here, not at the center of the shape. So hold down the console and alt keys and press the home button. 
and now press the Ctrl and Home buttons to move the circle shape to the center of the composition. Ok, move the triangle so that its vertices are in contact with the circumference of the circle. If you need, you can move it by arrow keys on your keyboard. Now the triangle is completely inside the circle shape. Now if I rotate this triangle shape, you will see that these vertices will not be in contact with the circumference of the circle. Yes, here you can see that this vertex of the triangle is outside of the circle shape now. And here, this vertex is not in contact with the circumference of the circle. So, what we can do to solve this problem? Let's reset the rotation to 0. To solve this problem, we have to change the anchor point position of the triangle shape. And that's why we have created this circle. So, select the circle shape. From the menu, choose Show Rulers option or press the Ctrl R keys. Now drag a vertical line exactly over this anchor point. Let's zoom in to see it better. OK. And let's add a horizontal ruler as well and put it exactly over the anchor point of the circle shape. OK. Let's zoom back again. Now to avoid selecting and moving these rulers accidentally, from the menu choose View, Lock Guides to lock them. Now as you can see, I can select and move these guidelines. OK. Now select the triangle shape and let's use this pan behind tool or press the Y key. And in composition window, click and drag this anchor point to attach it to the intersection of the two guidelines. If this snap is not working for you, simply from the menu choose View, a snap to guides. Or you can hold the console key while dragging the anchor point. It will snap to the guidelines. OK, now if I rotate this triangle shape, as you can see, now all the vertices of the triangle are constantly in contact with the circumference of the circle. So, now we have a correct rotation. OK, great. Let's reset the rotation value to 0. OK, now we don't need this circle shape anymore, so we can hide or delete it. Also, we don't need these guidelines, so let's hide them as well. OK, now let's move the circle shape to the center of the composition. OK, now I want to animate this triangle shape. So find the scale property in transform section or while this layer is still selected, press the S key to load the scale property. OK, in frame 0, let's change the scale value to 0 and set a keyframe by pressing this stopwatch button. Let's go to frame, for example, 85 and change it to, for example, 900. Now, if I scrub in timeline, you can see the result. OK, now select this keyframe and open graph editor. And here you can see that the scale property changes with the constant speed and we have a linear shape between these keyframes. Now let's make this animation a little smoother. So select both keyframes and right click on a keyframe and choose keyframe assistant easy ease or press F9. Now let's switch back to graph editor again. And this is the result. We have a nice curved shape here. We have two modes for the graph editor, a speed graph and a value graph. If I switch to value graph, you can see another type of the curve. You can use both of them, but I prefer to use a speed graph for this project. OK, now let's change curve shape even more to have a better result. So select the second keyframe and right click and choose keyframe velocity. And in incoming velocity, let's change the influence value to, for example, 55. Now if I go to Graph Editor again, you can see the result. And as you can see, we have a different shape for the curve line. You can change the shape of this curve line by moving this keyframe handle as well and move it until you find a nice curve shape. OK, great. Now let's see a RAM preview of this simple animation. So let's go to frame 100 and press the N key to move this work area and handle to this frame. Now we will have a RAM preview for this area between these two blue handles. OK, in preview panel, click on this play stop button or you can choose a shortcut key for this button. I have selected a spacebar key. Now if you press the spacebar key, you can see a RAM preview for this animation. OK, now I want to add a rotation to this object. So while this layer is still selected, hold down the Shift key and press the R key to load the rotation property as well. OK, let's go to frame 0. 
and change the rotation to, for example, negative 150 and set a keyframe here. Now let's go to frame 85 and change the rotation value to, for example, 35. Now if I scrub in timeline, you can see that the triangle rotates nicely. Okay, now let's smooth rotation keyframes. So select them and keyframe assistant, easy ease. And for the second keyframe, select keyframe velocity and change incoming velocity to 55%. Let's see the rotation curve in graph editor. Nice curve we have here. Okay, great. Okay, now I want to add a background to this transition. So select this triangle layer. From the menu, choose Edit, Duplicate, or press Ctrl D. Rename it to BG. Drag it under the triangle layer. And let's change the layer color to, for example, blue. For this layer, we don't need a stroke, so change a stroke options to none. And now for the fill color, let's enter this code. 2F0252. We will change this color later. And as you can see now, we have a nice background that fills inside this triangle. Okay, now I want to add more triangles to this scene. So duplicate this triangle two times by pressing Ctrl D. Let's change the color for these layers. For example, for the second layer, let's choose green. And for the third layer, I choose brown. Okay, now I want to add a null object to control the color of these triangles. So from the menu, choose Layer, New, Null Object. Let's rename it to Control. And now let's add a color control to this null object. From the menu, choose Effect, Expression Control, Color Control. Now you can see this effect in Effect Controls panel. If you can see this panel, simply from the menu, choose Effect, Effect Controls, or press F3. Now let's change its name to Color1 and duplicate it two times to be able to change the color for these three triangles. And now for each one, let's choose a color. For color one, change the color code to FFE400. For color two, enter B253FE. And for the third color, enter 7312BF. Okay, great. Let's reorder the layers. Layer 2 under layer 1 and layer 3 under layer 2. Okay, now I want to add offset between these layers. So select layer 2 and 3 and let's add 4 frames offset. Move timeline indicator to frame 4. Hold down the shift key and step these layers to timeline indicator. Now for the third layer, hold down the alt key and press the page down 4 times to add 4 frames offset. Okay, now select all these three layers and press the U key to load all keyframes properties. Now let's go to frame 85 and move the last keyframes of the second and third layers to this frame. Okay, now I want to connect a stroke color of these layers to our control layer. So select control layer and lock this button up here in effect controls panel to hold this panel open while I'm selecting other layers. Now for triangle 1, press the U key two times. Here we have a stroke color property. Hold down the Alt key and click on this stopwatch. Now click on this pick whip icon and drag it over the color 1 property. Okay, great. Follow the same process for the second layer. And connect a stroke color to color 2 controller. And finally, let's connect a third stroke color to color 3 controller. Okay, let's see what we have so far. Okay, great result. Okay, now I want to duplicate these triangles to have more shapes for our transition. So, select all triangle layers. Press Ctrl D to duplicate them. And then drag them under triangle 3 layer. Okay, move the timeline indicator to the beginning frame of the triangle 3 layer. And move all these layers to this frame. And now hold down the Alt key and press the page down button 5 times to add 5 frames offset to this layer collection. Now again let's duplicate these new 3 layers. So press Ctrl D. Drag them down. 
move the timeline indicator to the beginning of triangle 4 layer I snap these selected layers to this frame and offset them for 5 frames ok great now select all these triangle layers press the U key to load all keyframed properties now press the tilde button to show this panel in full screen mode ok for these first three layers, our last keyframes should be on frame 85, which is correct. For the second layer collection, let's move timeline indicator to frame, for example, 90, and select all these last keyframes and hold down the shift key to snap them to this frame. Now let's go to frame 95 and move these last keyframes to frame 95. Okay, awesome. Now I want to change some of these keyframes to have better result. So let's go to frame 85 over these keyframes. From here, I want to decrease the scale value by 50 units for each layer. So for the first layer, for a scale value, we have 900%. For the second layer, let's change it to 850%. And for the third layer, I want to change it to 800%. Okay. For the second layer collection, we have keyframes on frame 90. For the first layer, let's enter 750%. For the second layer, let's enter 700%. And for the third layer, enter 650%. Okay? For the third layer collection, we have keyframes on frame 95. For the first layer, enter 600%. For the second layer, let's enter 550%. And finally, for the third layer, enter 500%. Great, now it's time to change the rotation keyframes. From here, I want to decrease the rotation value by 10 units for each layer. For the first layer collection, let's go to frame 85. So for the triangle 1 layer, we have 35 degrees rotation. For the second layer, let's decrease it 10 units, so enter 25 degrees. And for the third layer, enter 15 degrees. Let's go to frame 90 to change keyframes of the second layer collection. For the first layer, enter 5 degrees. For the second layer, let's decrease it 10 units. So let's enter negative 5 degrees. And for the third layer, enter negative 15 degrees. Let's go to frame 95 to change keyframes of the third layer collection. For the first layer, enter negative 25 degrees. For the second layer, enter negative 35 degrees. And finally, for the third layer, let's enter negative 45 degrees. Press tilde the button again to exit the full screen mode. Let's scrub in timeline to see the results. Okay, it's time to see a RAM preview. Okay, great, nice result. Okay, now I want to create exit keyframes. So let's go to frame, for example, maybe 130. Yes. In timeline panel, select one layer and press Ctrl A keys to select all layers. Now press the U key to load all keyframe properties. Press the tilde button to switch to the full screen mode. Now I want to copy these keyframes from frame 85 to frame 130. So select them. Press Ctrl D to copy them into memory. And while your timeline is in frame 130, press Ctrl V to paste the keyframes. OK, follow the same process for all other layers as well. OK, great. Now let's go to frame, for example, 160. Select all these layers and for the escape property, create a keyframe. And change its value to, for example, 1200%. As you can see, After Effects created a keyframe in frame 160 and the scale value is 1200 for all these layers. And now let's create a keyframe for the rotation in frame 160 as well. And change the rotation value for all layers to 70 degrees. Now they have the same rotation value in frame 160. Let's delete this keyframe for BG layer. We don't need it. Okay. OK, now I want to edit rotation keyframes, so select all layers and press the R key to load all rotation properties. Select all third keyframes and right click, keyframe velocity, and in outgoing velocity section, for influence, enter 55%. Now, while these layers are still selected, press the S key to load the scale properties. Select all scale third keyframes and right click, 
keyframe velocity and for the influence enter 55% okay now let's switch to graph editor to see the curve shape you can select each scale property to see the curve shape and you can select keyframe handle to change it okay great okay now i want to add offset to some of these last keyframes so select all these triangle layers press the u key now select these keyframes and let's go to frame 165 and add 5 frames offset. Follow this process for the next keyframes and add 5 frames offset to all layers. Okay, it seems I have to increase the composition length. So from the menu choose composition, composition settings and change the duration to for example 250 frames for now. Okay, increase the length of this BG layer and move the last keyframe of the triangle 7 layer to frame 205. Now select all layers by pressing Ctrl A and now press Alt and close bracket to move the right edge of the layer to this frame. And then hold down the Shift key and move this work area and handle to frame 205. And maybe it's not bad idea to increase the length of this composition to frame 210. And finally press the Alt and close bracket keys again. Now right click on this bar and choose Dream Comp to work area. Okay, now I want to add a layer to cut all these layers to reveal the second footage. So duplicate the first layer. Rename it to Exit. And let's change the layer color to for example purple. Drag it on top of the BG layer. Okay, now let's see what we have so far. A scrub in timeline to see the results. They come into screen from frame 0 to frame 100, and from frame 130, they will go out of the screen. Okay, let's see a ramp review. Okay, great. Now I want to modify this exit layer. So let's go to frame for example 145 and move the exit layer to this frame and let's see the result. Okay, great. Click on this switches transfer controls button to show these two columns and for the BJ layer in track mat column choose alpha inverted mat. Okay, for this layer we need a fill color as well. And let's change the stroke color to, for example, white. So by activating this switches transfer controls button, we have cut the BJ layer by this exit layer. If I click on this toggle transparency grid button, you can see that we have cut the BG layer successfully. Okay, great. Let's scrub in timeline. Okay, I think we need to offset this exit layer a bit. Okay, now this exit layer cuts the scene after other triangles are out of the screen. So, exit layer should start from frame 152. Or maybe 150 is a good frame. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now I want to add shadow to our triangle layers. So, select the first triangle layer and let's add a shadow effect to this layer. From the menu, choose Effect, Perspective drop shadow. First of all, let's change the shadow color to 2D0150. A nice color. Our shadow is here, so let's change some features to make it clearer. Opacity is good, leave it at 50%. Let's change the distance to, for example, 10. And increase the softness to, for example, 200. Okay, now we have a nice shadow effect here. Now I want to add this shadow effect to all other layers, but I want to have a controller so that I don't have to change all these properties for all layers individually. So select control layer and press F3 or from the menu choose effect, effect controls to enable this control panel. Now I want to add two controllers to be able to control shadow effects. So from the menu choose effect, expression controls, a slider control. And let's change its name to Shadow Opacity. And we need a color control as well, so let's add it. 
and rename it to Shadow Color. Leave its color to red for now. Select the first triangle layer. Make sure this lock button is enabled for control layer. Press the E key to load all effects applied to this layer. Now we can see the drop shadow effect here. Okay, let's copy this shadow color into memory. We need this code soon. Now hold down the Alt key and click on the stopwatch and connect this shadow color property to the shadow color controller. As you can see, our shadow color is red now. Okay, let's connect shadow opacity as well. I'm sure you know how to do that. Shadow opacity is zero, so we can't see the shadow effect. Let's increase it to 50 again. You can add another slider to this controller to be able to change the shadow softness property as well. So let me show you how to do it. Add a new slider control. Rename it to shadow softness and connect this shadow softness effect to the shadow softness slider and change its value to 200. Let's change the shadow color again. Just paste that code. Now we have a nice shadow color here. Okay, great. Now we have an effect called drop shadow here that all its important properties are connected to our control object. And now I can apply this shadow effect to my other triangle layers. So select this drop shadow effect. From the menu choose edit, copy. Now select all other triangle layers. And from the menu choose edit, paste. Now as you can see, we have a nice shadow effect applied to all triangle layers. Okay. Now I want to change the color of this BG layer. So let's scrub a few frames forward. And for this layer, let's change the color to 7312BF. Okay, great. Okay, now I want to add a few markers to the timeline to have a visual representation to start, a stop, and end of the transition. So let's show timeline in full screen mode by pressing the tilde button. Select all layers and press the U key. Okay, as you can see, our stop keyframes are here in frame 95. Okay, click here to deselect all layers. Let's go to frame 0. Here, you can hold down the Alt key and press the Start key on your numpad. Or from the menu, choose Layer, Markers, Add Marker, or press the numpad Start key. Now, double click on this marker and let's type in. Okay, let's go to frame 95 and press the Alt and Numpad star keys and type stop. In frame 130, our Alt keyframes are here, so let's add another marker here. Press Alt and Numpad star keys and type out. And finally, let's add another marker here in frame 205 and let's call it end. Okay, we can move work area and handle to this frame and trim the composition as well. Press T the button to switch back to our previous workspace. Now if I scroll in timeline, you can see our objects will come into screen from frame 0 and they stop in frame 95 and they remain on the screen from frame 95 to frame 130 and from frame 130 they start to go out of the screen. And finally, in frame 205, the transition ends. Okay, great. Let's see a ramp preview for this transition. Awesome. Let's see in full screen mode as well. So put your mouse icon on the composition window and press the tilde button. Okay, awesome. Now you can change some of these properties if you like. For example, you can change shadow softness. You can change the shadow color. Here we have a red color now for the shadow effect. Also, you can increase or decrease shadow opacity. Okay, let's hit Ctrl Z to undo. Okay, now I want to add an adjustment layer to be able to change the color theme for all layers at once. So let's add an adjustment layer. As you may know, adjustment layer is a transparent layer, and when you apply an effect to it, it applies the effect to all the layers below it. Okay, let's rename it to effects. 
Now from the effects and presets panel, let's find color balance HLS and drag it over the effects layer. Okay, now if I change the hue property, as you can see, we have different color here for our layers. So you can change all layer colors simply. For example, let's change it to 45. If you like, you can play with this hue property to find the best color for your layers. And if you don't want to use it, simply turn off this effect here. Okay, well done. We have finished our transition. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial so far. In the next video, we are going to learn how to render this awesome transition and how to export and import transitions in Adobe After Effects. So, please don't miss it. Thanks and see you soon. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we're going to render our triangle transition in Adobe After Effects. Then we will import this transition into After Effects. You can use your render transition in other video editing programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut and so on. So without wasting time, let's get started. First of all, we need to create a new composition. So from the menu, choose Composition, New Composition or press Ctrl N. For the name, let's enter Triangle Render, leave width and height at current values, set pixel aspect ratio to square pixels. For frame rate, let's choose 30 frames per second, leave resolution to half, let's change duration to, for example, 400 frames, and for the background, I choose a black color, and hit the OK button. Now drag triangle composition into triangle render composition. As you can see, After Effects adds this triangle composition here with all markers we have made in triangle composition. Okay, now let's move this composition to the right to have a space for our first footage. So let's go to frame for example 100 and press left or open bracket key to move this layer to this frame. Now it's time to add some footage to our composition. So let's import two images. You can use videos as well. Now we can double click here in project window or right click and choose import file or hit control I. In import file window, I choose this image and maybe this one is okay. You can hold down control key to select multiple files. Okay. Make sure this imported JPEG sequence option is off. Otherwise, After Effects imports all selected files as a single footage and hit OK button. Our image imported successfully. Let's make a folder for these images. Always try to organize your project window by creating folders and giving a nice name to your folders, compositions and other stuffs. Drag this image over create a new folder button and let's give it a name, for example, footage. Now drag these two images into triangle render composition under this triangle composition. Now let's move bottom image under out marker at frame 226. And now let's cut the top image at this frame. So select it and press alt and right or close bracket key. Okay, it seems our images are too large. So let's select them and let's zoom back a bit. For example, 12.5%. Yes, they are bigger than our composition size, so let's fix this problem. So from the menu, choose Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp With. Now, as you can see, our images are fit inside the composition. Okay, let's fit to composition again. Now, scrub in timeline to see the transition. Okay, it works nicely, great. Now, let's see how we can change the timing of this transition. We can make this transition faster or even slower using four simple keyframes. So, right click on triangle transition and choose time, enable time remapping, or press Ctrl Alt T. After Effects adds two keyframes at the beginning and at the end of this composition. Let's move this end marker to the last keyframe. Hold the Shift key to snap it to the marker position. Okay. Now we need two more keyframes to have full control over the transition timing. So, move timeline indicator to a stop marker by holding the shift key. Click on this small diamond button to add a new keyframe here. Again, hold down the shift key to snap the timeline indicator to the out marker. And add a new keyframe at this frame as well. 
Okay, now by moving these four keyframes, we can change the speed of this transition. But before that, let's reduce the resolution to, for example, quarter. Now we can move the second keyframe to the left to have faster transition. As you can see, we have almost 95 frames between in and a stop marker. And it takes 95 frames for our transition to fill the composition window. But we can make it faster. So let's move the second keyframe to frame, for example, 125. So our transition will cover this screen in 25 frames, faster than normal speed. Let's scroll up in timeline to see the results. OK. Now we have more space between the second and the third keyframes. So we have this section for longer time on the screen. And we can move the last keyframe to the left to finish the transition and reveal the second footage faster. So we can use this technique to change the timing of a transition. We will render this transition soon and you can use this technique for video format transitions as well. Okay, let's undo these changes. So move the keyframes to the original positions. Okay, now let's add a simple animation to our footage to have better result with this transition. So let's add keyframes to this footage. Select it and press the S key to load the scale property. And in frame 100, let's add a keyframe. Okay. And let's go to frame 195, which we have a stop marker here. And let's increase the scale value. For example, 100%. Now, if I scroll up in timeline, you can see that the image gets bigger from frame 100 to 195. Okay. For the second image, load the scale property. And for the last marker, let's add a scale keyframe at current value. And let's go back to out marker in frame 226. And let's enter a smaller value. So let's enter 50%. A scrub to see the result. Okay, as you can see, we have a small problem here. If I enable this toggle transparency grid button, you can see here on the left and right of the image, we have empty space. To solve this problem, let's add an effect called CC Repetile. So let's find it in Effects and Presets panel. And let's drag it over this bottom image layer. Now we have this effect here in Effect Controls panel. I want to expand the left and the right side of this image. So let's increase Expand Right value. As you can see here, we are adding more pixels to the right using this Expand Right option. Let's increase it to, for example, 600. And also, let's expand the left side. So set it to 600. And we can expand even down and top sections. So let's change the radio to 600 as well. Now, as you can see, we have a sharp edge here at the position we have expand the image. To solve this problem, let's change tiling option. Let's set it to unfold. In fact, unfold option reverses the image so we have a nice and smooth blending in pixels without any sharp edge. And it copies pixels from the right to the left. Now let's check it again. Oops, it seems we have to increase the expand option even more to solve this problem again. So let's change all these numbers to a bigger value, for example, 1000. Let's check it again. Okay, it seems everything is great. Now it's time to smooth our keyframes. So select all scale keyframes and convert them to easy ease or press F9. Now let's smooth our animation keyframes even more. So select the first keyframe of the top image and select keyframe velocity option. And let's change outgoing velocity influence to 70%. Okay, and for the bottom image, let's change the velocity for the second keyframe. So for the incoming velocity influence, let's enter 70%. Now we have a nice and smooth scale animation for our two images. Let's see curves in graph editor for these two scale properties. If you like, you can see them in speed graph mode as well. Yes, for the first image, we have a nice curve as well. Okay, great. We have finished this transition successfully. Maybe you like to export this transition as a video to use in other video editing programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut and so on. So let me show you how to do it properly. First of all, in project panel, if I open this transition composition, 
you can see all layers here in timeline and the duration of this transition is 200 frames. Now let's create a new composition from this transition composition. So drag it over this create a new composition button and hit return key and rename it to for example triangle export. Now select it and from the menu choose composition. Here we have two options. Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue and add to render queue. If you have Adobe Media Encoder installed on your system, I suggest you to use this option because you have a great program that will render your After Effects projects quickly with high quality and also you can use great video compressors like H.264 that can reduce your file size dramatically. If you don't have Adobe Media Encoder, so use the second option which is Add to Render Queue or press Ctrl M. Okay, here we can see Render Queue panel. And as you can see, After Effects added your triangle export composition here to the render queue. In this panel, we have three main sections. Render settings, output module, and output 2. Click on the best settings. Set the quality to best. Set the resolution to full, which means you want to render your transition with the same size as your composition. Therefore, the size of your final video will be the same as your composition size, which is 1920 in 1080 pixels. And in frame rate section, we have two options. First one is 29.97 frames per second, which is good, but I prefer to use the second option, which is 30 frames per second, and it is equal to the frame rate you have chosen when creating your composition. And now, press the OK button. In Output Module section, click on Lossless option. In Format section, we can choose the video format. You can choose AVI, JPEG Sequence, PNG, Photoshop, QuickTime, and even TGA format. I prefer to use QuickTime format. As I want to have a transparent background, and our video must have an alpha channel, so for this channel's option, let's choose RGBA plus alpha. Now click on Format Options button. Here you can see lots of great video codecs. I prefer to use Animation Codec, which creates very high quality videos, and of course the final video will have a large size as well, and fortunately it supports Alpha Channel. If you have H.264 compressor in this list, please don't use that codec. Unfortunately, H.264 does not feature Alpha Channel support. Okay. And finally, in Output 2 section, here you can select the destination folder, type a name, and the format is QuickTime Video, and finally press the Save button. Okay, before pressing the Render button, open the Triangle Export Composition. Let's make sure that our composition has a transparent background, so move the Timeline Indicator a few frames forward, and click on this Toggle Transparency Grid button. And yes, as you can see, we have this transparent checkboard, which means we have an alpha channel in this composition. Okay, let's go back to render queue panel. Everything is ready, and now let's press the render button. As a quick tip, you can slightly reduce your rendering time by turning on the caps lock button. When you press it, the rendering window will be frozen, which helps your videos render a little faster. Okay, great. The rendering process is over. Now let's close some of these panels. Okay, now let's test our video transition. So, in triangle render composition, let's delete this triangle layer. Okay, now let's import the transition video that we have rendered recently. Here it is. Select and import it. It's in project window now. Drag it on top of these two layers. Let's go to frame, for example, 100. Press the left or open bracket key to move this layer to frame 100. Now, if I scrub in timeline, as you can see, After Effects performance improved because After Effects only plays a video and there is no need to analyze and calculate anything. You can also use that time remapping technique here. Use triangle composition as a reference to know where to place your markers and keyframes. So you can simply add keyframes and move them to change the timing of this video transition. To see a RAM preview, in frame 301, press the N key to move the work area and handle to this frame. And click on this play button to play a RAM preview. Okay, in fact our transition starts from frame 100. 
So let's go to frame 100 and press the B key to move the work area start handle to this frame. Now After Effects plays only from frame 100 to 301. Press the spacebar key. Okay, great, nice result. Finally, let's organize our project. So select all items and create a new folder and rename it to Triangle. Okay, we have successfully rendered this transition and now you can use this video transition in other video editing programs. So go ahead and watch the next videos to learn how to create more amazing and awesome video transitions. Thanks and see you in the next video. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to create a line transition in Adobe After Effects. So without wasting time, let's get started. Okay, first of all, let's create a composition. Click on this new composition button. For name, let's enter lines. Leave all settings as they are. Width is 1920 pixels and height is 1080 pixels. And set the duration to 200 and press the OK button. OK, here's the lines composition in project panel. OK, now I want to create a line shape for our transition. So let's zoom back a bit, change it to 12.5%. I want to create a vertical line. So Click on Pen Tool, make sure the Fill option is None, and let's change the Stroke to Linear Gradient, and change the Stroke Width to 50. OK, let's create the line. So click here, hold down the Shift key, and click at the bottom of the Composition window. OK, here's the line shape, great. Let's move it a bit using arrow keys. If you want to change the height of the line, simply select the Convert Vertex tool and hold down the Ctrl key and click on this vertex and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it up and down. OK. To change the color of this line, click on the Stroke Color box. For the left color, let's use this code FFE400. And for the right color, let's use this code 8 e 0 FF. OK. Select the line shape. Press Ctrl, Alt, and Home buttons to move the anchor point to the center of the line shape. And then press Ctrl and Home buttons to move the shape to the center of the composition. OK. Now press the Return key or Enter key and rename the layer to Line 1. OK. Now I want to animate the stroke of this line shape. So select the line shape. And let's find the stroke width property in gradient stroke section. OK, here it is. Let's go to frame, for example, 15. And change the stroke width to 0. Set a keyframe here. Now let's go to frame, for example, 45. And this time, let's change the stroke width to, for example, 200. OK, now if I scroll up in timeline, as you can see, we're changing the stroke width now from frame 15 to 45. Let's go 10 frames forward, I mean frame 55, and click on this small diamond button to add a new keyframe at the current time frame with value 200. And now let's go to frame, for example, 85, and let's change it to zero again. After Effects created a keyframe here automatically. OK, let's see what we have so far. OK. Nice result. OK, select all keyframes and convert them to Easy Ease or press F9. Let's switch to Graph Editor Panel to see the curve shapes. Here you can select keyframes and you can change the handles to have different shape for the curves. Or let's go back to Timeline again. And here right click on the keyframe and let's change keyframe velocity. And in incoming velocity, change the influence value to 70%. And for the third keyframe, let's change the keyframe velocity. And in outgoing velocity, let's change the influence value to 70%. Now, if you switch to Graph Editor Panel, you can see new shape for the curves. We have a nice and smooth transition in our keyframes. OK, great. OK, now I want to add an effect to the line shape. So, Click on this Add button to add an effect called Repeater. Let's change Repeater options, but first of all, let's move Timeline Indicator to a round frame, for example, 40 or 41. Now change Copies option to 15. 
and change the offset value to negative 15. Now, as you can see, it filled half of the screen. So I think it's better to increase the copies to cover the entire screen. So let's change it to 30. Okay, great. Now let's rotate the line a little bit. So press the R key to load the rotation property and change it to, for example, negative 20. If your line is small, let's zoom back a bit. Yes, if this section of the composition is empty, it means the height of your line is a little small. So press the S key to load the scale property and uncheck this chain button to be able to scale the Y property separately. And now scale it up to fill the entire composition. As you can see, if your line is too small, this section will be empty. So increase it until your composition fills with these shapes. I leave it at 100%. Okay, now activate selection tool. Here, let's find the start point in gradient stroke section. Okay. If you select a start point and end point, as you can see, we have two circles here in composition window. Let's zoom in to see it clearly. Yes. Let's increase the quality as well. Here you can see these circles. Okay. Now just click and drag this circle to align it with the line to have a nice transition for the line color. We can move it down even more to change the gradient color distribution on the composition. Maybe somewhere like here, aligned with the line. Okay, and let's change the top circle position as well to have a nice and a smooth color transition. It's better to align the circles with the line. Okay. Let's see what will happen if our circles are not aligned with the line. As you can see, we don't have a nice transition and instead we will have sharp edges for each copied line shape. So it's better to align these circles to the line shape. Okay, now I want to add an offset effect to our line shapes. Let me show you why I'm going to do that. So let's create a new composition and rename the composition to map. Leave all the settings as they are and hit OK button. Here it is the map composition. I want to add a gradient effect to this composition, so I need to add a solid layer here. Activate the timeline panel and from the menu choose Layer, New, Solid. And press the Comp Size button and change the color to, for example, white. OK. OK, now I want to add a gradient ramp to this solid layer, so select it. And in Effects and Presets panel, let's find Gradient Ramp Effect. Yes, here it is. Double click to apply it to the solid layer. Here in Effect Controls panel, we have two color box, a start color and end color. Click on this start of ramp position button. It is here now at the top of the composition. I want it to be here at the right bottom of the composition. So click here. And let's change the position of the end of ramp as well. Let's place it here at the left top of the composition window. Okay, now I want to change this white color. I don't want it to be completely white. So let's change it to, for example, something like 90, 90, 90. Okay. Here we have a ramp scatter effect that it adds noise to the gradient. So let's zoom in a bit to see the effect clearly. Now if I increase it to, for example, 150, you can see a noise effect on the screen. Okay, we have finished this map composition. So let's go back to lines composition. And now from project window, drag the map composition on top of lines shape layer. We don't want to see the ramp in this composition, so let's hide it. Okay, great. Now I want to add an adjustment layer. As you may know, adjustment layers are transparent layers which will apply effects to the bottom layers. So from the menu, choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Now in Effects and Presets panel, let's find an effect called Time Displacement and apply to adjustment layer. Here in effect controls panel, in time displacement layer, select map option, which is this map composition here in timeline, and we have hidden it, okay. 
Now you can see the result here in composition window. Let's change the max displacement time to, for example, 0 0.2 and change time resolution to 240. Okay, and let's turn off this stretch map to fit option. Okay, great. Now I want to add a new viewer, so activate composition window and from the menu choose view new viewer. Okay, let's make these viewers a little bigger. For this view, I open map composition, unlock the chain button for this view, and again, lock this view to map composition. Now this view is connected to this map composition. Let's open lines composition, and lock this view to lines composition. Okay, now open the map composition, rename the solid layer to map gradient, Okay, now if I change the position of this sort of ramp color handle, please watch the effect in the left window. And now if I change the end of ramp position, you can see the results. Okay, let's move it to the first position again. And maybe it's better to move a start of ramp to here. Okay. And now let's open lines composition again. And if I turn this adjustment layer on and off, you can see the difference. Yes, an awesome effect. Let's rename the adjustment layer to time. We don't need this map viewer, so let's close it. Okay, great. Now deselect all layers. Let's go to frame zero and press Alt and Star key on your numpad. Type in for this marker. Let's go to frame 45 and press Alt Star key and type a stop for the comment box. For frame 55, type out. And finally, in frame 100, type end. A snap work area end handle to frame 100 using the Shift key or press the end key while timeline indicator is in frame 100. Right click here and trim comp to work area. Okay, let's see a run preview. Okay, great. Okay, now I want to add an adjustment layer to apply effect to below layers. So let's create another adjustment layer. Rename it to effects. And in effects and presets panel, let's find an effect called color balance HLS. And apply it to the adjustment layer. Let's go to frame, for example, 25. And here we can change the hue property to change the color. For example, if I change it to 45, we have another color effect. A simple way to change the colors for our shapes. Let's go to frame, for example, 45. And now you can change the hue effect to find the best color effect. Okay, if you don't want to apply this effect, simply hide this effect layer or disable this color balance effect here. Okay, now I want to show you how to use this transition in After Effects. So, let's go back to Lines Composition. We need to create a new composition. Rename it to Lines Render. Change the duration to, for example, 300 frames. Now drag Lines Composition inside the Lines Render Composition. Here you can see the In, Stop, Out and End markers. Let's move it a few frames forward. Now I want to import a few images. You can import videos as well. Let's create a new folder here. Rename it to Footage. Now to import files into After Effects, simply double click here in Project Window. Let's select all images, but make sure this imported JPEG sequence is disabled. If this option is enabled, then all of your files will be imported as one footage. So disable this option and import the files. Okay, while all these images are still selected, simply drag them inside footage folder. By doing this, we have a nice structure for our After Effects projects. Don't forget to organize your projects with folders and try to give them a proper name to find them easily instead of using comp1, comp2 and so on. Okay, now let's drag image 1 into timeline under the lines composition. 
and drag the image to under the image one layer. Okay, now drag image two to start from out marker. Or let's start transition from frame 100. So now move the beginning of the image two under the out marker again. And I want to cut this image one from out marker. So hold the alt key and press the close bracket key. Or you can hold the shift key and drag the right edge of the layer to this frame. Okay, now we need to resize our image. So select the image one. Let's zoom back a bit. As you can see, our image is too large. So let's decrease the image size. From the menu, choose layer, transform. Here we have three options, fit to comp, fit to comp width, and fit to comp height. I choose fit to comp width option. Now, as you can see, our image fits inside the composition area. And let's follow the same process for the second image. If we select fit to comp option, After Effects will scale the image in X and Y direction to fit it inside the composition area. This action maybe distorts your image. So I suggest you to use fit to comp width or height. But I selected fit to comp option to show you the result and it was only for education purpose. Now let's move work area start handle to this in marker and move timeline indicator to end marker and move the work area end handle to this frame by pressing the end key. Okay, now let's see ramp preview for this section. Okay, great. Okay, now I want to show you how to change the length of this transition with a few keyframes. Select this transition composition, right click and choose time, Enable time remapping or press Ctrl Alt T. As you can see, After Effects added two keyframes to this composition at the beginning and end. Now hold the Shift key and stop timeline indicator to stop marker. And click on this small diamond to add a keyframe here. Hold the Shift key and stop to out marker. And again, create a new keyframe here. Now we have four keyframes here. Now we can change the length of the transition by moving these four keyframes. Let me show you how to do it properly. Let's move the end marker a bit and then move the right edge of the composition to the right to have more time to show the transition on the screen. Now if we increase the space between these two first keyframes, we make this transition place slower. For example, let's move these keyframes to the right to have more frames between the first and the second keyframe. And also, let's add more space between the third and the fourth keyframe as well. Now our transition will run for a longer time, and this makes the transition to play slowly. We can decrease the space between the second and the third keyframe as well to pass this section faster. Now we need to move these edges of the footage under the third keyframe, which in fact is the out marker. Okay, now let's increase the work area length as well. Okay. Now let's play a ramp preview. Okay, great. Now we have a slower transition. Awesome. Okay, let's undo a few steps to move the keyframes to their original positions. Great. Now let's organize the project structure. So select all items in project window and drag them over the new folder button and rename the folder to lines. Okay, great. We have finished this transition successfully. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial so far. To learn how to create more engaging transitions, don't miss out other videos. Thanks and see you soon. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we're going to create amazing cartoon transition in Adobe After Effects. So without wasting time, let's get started. First of all, let's create a composition. For the name, type curtain and leave other settings as they are width is 1920 pixels height is 1080 pixels other settings are okay and let's change the duration to for example 200 frames for now the background color is black and hit okay our cartoon composition is here in project panel okay we need to have a solid layer here in timeline so activate this panel and let's add a solid layer here for name, enter BG, I mean background. And let's change the color here, for example, 22003D. 
and hit OK buttons. Let's zoom back a bit. OK. And load the scale property for this solid layer. Unlock this chain button. And let's increase the scale Y property, for example, to 200%. OK. Now I want to add a mask to this solid layer. So select the layer and double click on this rectangle tool to add a rectangle as a mask to this solid layer. Now you can see this mask created for this layer. Click on the composition window to deselect the mask. Now click on one of these vertices to select it. Now as you can see, other vertices are not selected. Now use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move this vertex to the top. OK, somewhere like here. OK, make sure this toggle mask and shape path visibility is on to be able to see this mask for our solid layer. OK, now I want to animate this mask. So let's go to frame, for example, 60. Press the P key to load the position property. And let's create a keyframe here. OK, now let's go to frame 0. And let's change the position value. As a quick tip, when I want to drag this value, the numbers change one by one. But if I hold down the Shift key, the numbers change by 10 units. And if I hold down the Control key, the numbers change in decimal, which is great to increase accuracy. So let's hold down the shift key and move it up until it's outside of the black composition area. Let's scrub in timeline to see the result. OK, it enters the screen from frame 0 and it stops here in frame 60. OK, now let's go to frame 100 and create a keyframe here. And now let's go a few frames forward, for example, to frame 130. And hold down the shift key and lower this mask until it's outside of the black composition area. OK, great. Let's scrub in timeline to see the result. OK, from frame 0 to 60, it enters the screen. Between frames 60 to 100, it is constant on the screen. And it leaves the screen from frame 100 to 130. OK, great. Now let's make these keyframes smoother. So select all keyframes, right click and choose keyframe assistant, easy ease or press F9. OK, now I want to change velocity for the second and third keyframes. So select the second keyframe, right click and choose keyframe velocity. And for incoming velocity, let's change the influence value to 80%. And for the third keyframe, for outgoing velocity, let's change the influence value to 80% as well. Let's check the curve shape in Graph Editor. OK, now we have a nice and a smooth curve shape here. Let's change the layer color to, for example, blue. OK, now I want to create other curtain layers. So duplicate a new layer from BG and rename it to Layer 1. Let's add a fill effect to this layer. So choose Effect, Generate, Fill. For the color, let's change it to this code 2E014E. Let's go to frame 60 and let's change this layer. Press the M key to load the mask property. Select the mask node. Click on this section of the composition window to activate it. Now by using selection tool, click on this vertex to select it. Let's move these two bottom vertices to make a different shape for this layer. Now, this time duplicate a new layer from layer 1. Now we have layer 2. For this layer 2, let's modify the mask to have a different shape with an opposite angle to the previous layer. And for the color, let's change it to, for example, 3B0764. Let's modify the mask shape for this layer 1 a bit. Let's zoom in to check it. OK, great. Now duplicate a new layer from layer 2. Now we have layer 3. And for the color, let's enter this code 510B89. Now it's time to modify the mask to have a different shape. Move these bottom vertices to find the best shape. OK. Now duplicate a new layer from layer 3. AE created layer 4 for us. For the color, let's enter 3E0. 
0869. Let's modify the mask a bit. Try to create a cross and opposite shape for these layers. OK. Now duplicate again to create layer 5. Change the fill color to 660DAC. And again, let's modify the mask a bit. OK. Duplicate again to create layer 6. Change the fill color to 510B89. And again, let's modify the mask a bit by moving these vertices. OK. Duplicate to create a layer 7. Let's change the fill color to 7312BF. And modify the mask again, something like this. OK. And finally, duplicate to create layer 8. Change the fill color to 8A15E6. Of course, you can choose your favorite colors. And let's modify the last mask shape. OK, great. Now let's change layer color for BG, for example, yellow. OK, let's see what we have so far. If I scrub in timeline, you can see that these layers enter the screen. OK, great. Now I want to add offset between these layers. So select layers from 1 to 8. Hold down the Alt key and press page down key once. Now we have one frame offset. Hold down Ctrl key, click on layer 1 to deselect it. And now again press Alt and page down keys to add one frame offset. Follow the same process to add one frame offset to other layers as well. OK, great. Now select all layers and press the U key to load all keyframes. OK, it seems last keyframe is here in frame 68. OK, great. Now we have offset between these layers. Let's see a RAM preview. So in frame 70, press the N key to move the work area end handle to this frame. And now press the spacebar key. OK, great. I think it's a good idea to change the shape of this layer a bit, which is layer 2, I think. Yes, we can move these vertices a bit. Yes, something like this. OK, now I want to add an adjustment layer to cut these curtain layers. So from the menu, choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Let's rename it to Cut. And let's change the scale Y to 200. Now in Effects and Presets panel, I'm going to find an effect called Set Matte. I mean this effect. Now let's copy mask from layer 7 into memory. So select layer 7, press the M key to load the mask property. From the menu choose Edit, Copy. Now select Cut Layer and from the menu choose Edit, Paste. In Effect Controls panel, for Take Matte from Layer, choose this Cut option. And for this Use for Matte, choose Alpha Channel and enable this Invert Matte option. Now if I enable this Target Transparency Grid button, you can see that the top section of the composition is transparent now. In fact, this adjustment layer cuts all the underlying layers. OK, now I want to animate this cut layer as well. So let's go to frame for example 100. Press the P key to load the position property. Let's decrease position Y to move it up, for example 100. Create a keyframe at this position. And let's scrub in timeline to find the best frame for this cut layer. Maybe frame 130 is a good frame. It seems OK. Now convert keyframes to easy ease. And for the first keyframe, change outgoing velocity influence to, for example, 70%. Now, if I scrub in timeline, you can see the result. Let's cut this layer in frame 100 using Alt and Open Bracket key. Let's add offset to this cut layer. For example, move it to frame 110. Let's change second keyframe to 135. And let's check it again. 
it's better to move the second keyframe to find the best position for it. Okay, I think it's better now. Let's move the work area and bar handle to contain only 135 frames of this animation. Okay, now let's see a ramp preview. Okay, great. To have more professional look for this transition, we can add shadow to layers. So, go to frame around 70 to see all curtain layers. Let's create a null object to control shadow effect and rename it to control. Now I want to add a shadow effect to one of these layers, for example, layer 8. Find drop shadow effect in effects and presets panel and apply it to the cut layer. Let's pick a dark color for this layer. Yes. Increase the distance to, for example, 50. Change softness value to maybe 150. Now I want to add some controllers to this null object to control shadow effects. Change this slider to shadow opacity. Let's add a color control as well. Rename it to shadow color. Let's pick shadow color from this dark layer. And now lock this effect controls panel to hold it open. Now. Let's create another slider. So let's duplicate shadow opacity and rename it to shadow softness. Okay, select layer 8. Press the E key to load all effects applied to it. Here we have a shadow effect. I want to connect this shadow color to the shadow color controller. So hold down the Alt key and click on this stopwatch. Now drag this pick whip icon over the shadow color controller. Now let's connect this opacity as well. So alt click and drag the pick whip icon over the shadow opacity slider. Here we have two other properties, distance and softness. We can add another slider to control distance property. So let's duplicate shadow softness and rename it to shadow distance. Move it up. And let's connect distance to shadow distance slider. And finally, connect softness to shadow softness. Okay, let's change opacity to 50. Increase the distance to 50. And increase the softness to 150. If I change this softness to 0, as you can see, our shadow is cut here. To solve this problem, we need to change the scale value of these layers. So, select all layers. Press the S key to load the scale property and change the scale X for all layers, for example, to 105. OK. Now select layer 8. Press the E key to load all effects applied to this layer, which is in this case is drop shadow. Select this effect and from the menu choose edit, copy. Now select all other layers and from the menu choose edit, paste. Now, as you can see, we have shadow effect applied to all layers. Now, if I change the softness value to 150, as you can see, we have a soft shadow for our layers. Let's hide this control layer. Okay, great. Let's see a RAM preview. Okay, it's not a bad idea to move the second frame of cut layer to a few frames forward. For example, 135. And now press the N key to move the work area and handle to this frame. Okay, awesome. Okay, now it's time to add markers. So let's go to frame 0. Make sure all layers are deselected. Press the Alt and Start key on your notepad and type in here. Okay, now let's see where we have keyframes. So select all layers and press the U key. Yes, the last keyframe of the first section of the animation is here in frame 68. So we can add a marker here around frame 70. Deselect all layers and press the Alt and Star key and type a Stop. And the first keyframe of this exit section is here in frame 100. Uh, which I think there is too much space between the second and the third keyframes. So we can move them a bit. And that third keyframe starts from 85. 
So select all these keyframes and move them to frame 85. And let's move the cut layer to frame, for example, 95 or 96. So the first keyframe of out section is here in frame 85. Press Alt and Star key and type out. And the last keyframe is here in frame 123. Let's add a marker in frame 125 and type end. Now press the end key and right click and trim the composition. Okay, great. Let's scrub in timeline. And yes, this is our transition. Okay, now I want to add an adjustment layer to apply a color balance effect. Rename it to effects. And let's find color balance HLS effect in effects and presets panel. Double click on it to add it to the effects layer. Let's change hue parameter to find a nice color. For example, 45. Nice color effect. Okay. But if you don't want to use this color effect, you can simply disable it. Okay, great. Now I want to use this transition between two footage. So let's create a new composition. Rename it to Kitten Render. Leave all settings as they are. And let's change the duration to, for example, 300 frames. Okay. Now drag the curtain composition inside it. Now, as you can see, we have all markers here. Let's move it a few frames forward. And now it's time to add image. But before that, let's create a folder to organize the project window. Rename the folder to footage. Double click on project window. Select two images, for example, this one. And this one is OK. Make sure this imported JPEG sequence is off. Press the import button. And drag these two files inside the footage folder. Now drag these two images inside the timeline. Move the top image to the right. I want this image starts after the out marker. And for the bottom image, select it and press the Alt and close bracket key to cut the image at this frame. Let's check this transition. Scrub in timeline to see the result. OK, great. We can change the image size. So for the first image, let's select Fit to Comp. And also for the second image, let's select Fit to Comp Width. OK. Now let's see a run preview for frame 0 to 200. So press the N key here in frame 200. Okay, nice results. Awesome. Now let's organize project window. Select all folders and compositions. Drag them over this create a new folder button and rename the folder to curtain. Okay, as you know, we can add time remapping effect to control transition speed and length. So select curtain transition composition, right click and choose time, enable time remapping. Okay. Add a keyframe at a stop marker position and also add another keyframe here at out marker position. And by moving these keyframes, as I told you before in previous videos, you can change the speed and length of your transition. If you didn't watch previous videos, I highly recommend you to watch them now. Okay, as you can see, our transition enters the screen sooner, stays on the screen longer, and finally leaves the screen faster than normal transition speed. And if you remember, I told you before how to create and use this time remapping effect. Okay, great. We have finished this curtain transition successfully. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Thanks and see you in the next video. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we're gonna create an amazing circle transition in Adobe After Effects. So without wasting time, let's get started. Click on this new composition button. For name, enter circles. Width is 1920 pixels. Height is 1080 pixels. Pixel aspect ratio is a square pixels. Frame rate is 30 frames per second. Resolution is quarter. Duration is 300 frames. And the background color is black. 
Okay, now here we have the circle composition in project window. Okay, now I want to create some circle shapes. So activate this timeline panel and let's add a solid layer. From the menu, choose layer, new, solid. Rename it to BG circle. Now in effects and presets panel, let's find circle effect. Okay, and drag it over the BG circle layer. Okay, for the color property, let's change it to 2D0150. And for the edge, select thickness. Let's increase the thickness value to, for example, 1200. Okay, now I want to animate this circle shape. So let's go to frame 0. Now I need to increase the radius value. Let's increase it, hold down the shift key, and finally let's enter, for example, 2000. Set the keyframe for radius in frame 0. Now let's go to frame, for example, 55, and decrease the radius value using the shift key, and let's set it to, for example, 600. Okay, let's see the result. Okay, select both keyframes. And convert them to easy ease to make a smooth animation. And if you switch to graph editor, as you can see, we have a nice curve shape for current keyframe velocity. Here we have two methods for graph editor, edit a speed graph and edit value graph. If I switch to value graph, we have something like this. Now we can drag handle of the second keyframe. And if I switch back to a speed graph, you can see the result here as well. Also, we can use numbers instead of changing curves. So switch back to timeline mode, right click on the second keyframe and choose keyframe velocity. And here in incoming velocity for influence, let's enter 70%. Now we have a nice and a smooth curve transition in graph editor window. Okay, now I want to add another circle shape. So click on this tool and choose ellipse tool. Now click on the composition window, hold down the shift key, and then hold down the control key to create a perfect circle shape based on the point you have clicked. Okay, great. Make sure this fill option is none. And for the stroke, we can choose solid type. For a stroke color, let's type this color code E36BFF. And for the stroke width, let's enter 100. And let's change the size of this circle shape. So in ellipse 1, ellipse path 1, here we can change the size. For example, let's enter 1080. Let's rename this shape layer to circle 1. When I select it, as you can see, its anchor point is not at the center of the circle shape. So while it's still selected, press the Ctrl, Alt and Home buttons to move the anchor point to the center of the shape. And now press Ctrl and Home buttons to move the shape to the center of the composition. Okay, let's fit the composition. And switch to Selection Tool. Okay, now I want to animate this second circle shape. So select the layer and press the S key to load the scale property. Let's go to frame, for example, 5. And change the scale value to 300 to be outside of the composition window. Create a keyframe here. Now let's go to frame, for example, 80, and decrease the scale value to 70. Okay, great. Now I want to animate the stroke of this circle. So open content, ellipse 1, a stroke 1. Now I want to animate this stroke width property. Let's go to frame 20, and add a keyframe here, and change its value to 200. Again, let's go to frame 80 and change a stroke width value to 100. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, great. Let's select the layer and press the U key to load all keyframes. Select all keyframes and convert them to easy ease. Now I want to create out keyframes. So let's go to frame, for example, 100. Select both second keyframes and from the menu choose edit, copy. And in frame 100, paste those keyframes. Let's check graph editor for a second. Okay, we have a nice curve shape for our keyframes. Switch back to timeline mode again. 
Now for the second scale keyframe, let's change the velocity. And for influence incoming velocity, enter 70%. And also for a stroke width, let's change keyframe velocity and for the incoming velocity set influence to 70%. Let's check the graph editor for a stroke width. And also let's see a scale curve in graph editor. Okay, great. Now I want to add another level of animation to this circle. So click on this small add button and select trim path. Okay, now let's animate this trim path and let's go to frame for example 110 and create a keyframe here for a start. And let's go to frame 140 and increase the start value to 100. Now in this section, line cap, let's change it to round cap. Look at this beginning and end of the circle line. When I choose round cap, we have a round shape for both of them. Okay, now let's convert these keyframes to easy ease. And for the second keyframe, let's change keyframe velocity and set incoming velocity influence to 70%. And this is the curve shape of this animation. Okay, great. Let's scrub in timeline to see the result. Okay, awesome. Now I want to add another circle shape to this composition. So use ellipse tool to create another circle shape. Hold down shift and control keys to create a perfect circle based on the point you click. Make sure this fill option is none and change the stroke color to for example 6BD6FE. And a circle width should be on 150. Let's rename the layer to circle 2. And let's change the size of this circle. But before that, let's press Ctrl, Alt, and Home buttons to move the anchor point to the center of the circle shape. And then press Ctrl and Home buttons to move the circle to the center of the composition. And now let's increase the size to for example 1500. Now I want to animate this circle. So press the S key to load the scale property. Let's go to frame for example 20. Change the scale value to 300%. And set a keyframe here. Now go to frame 80. And now let's change the scale value to 100. We will convert these keyframes to easy ease later. So don't worry. Okay, now I want to animate the out section of this transition. So select the BG layer. And let's go to frame 100. I want to create a new keyframe here with this current value, 600. So click on this small diamond button and let's increase the radius value to for example 2000. Okay, for the third keyframe, let's change the outgoing velocity influence to 70%. Now let's check the curve in graph editor. Okay, great. Now let's animate circle one. Load scale keyframes by pressing the S key. In frame 100, our scale value is 70. Let's go to frame 150 and decrease it to 0. Okay, select the third keyframe. Let's check the curve shape in graph editor. This is the current shape of the curves. Let's change the velocity for the third keyframe and change the influence of the outgoing velocity to 70%. Check it again in graph editor. Nice and smooth curve shape. Okay, let's see what we have so far. Okay, great. Now I want to animate the stroke width of circle 1 shape, so press the U key. Okay, in frame 100, we have a keyframe here. So let's go to frame, for example, 140 and increase it to 300. As you can see, a stroke size is getting bigger from frame 100 to 140. Okay, now let's change the third keyframe velocity. Check it in graph editor. Yes, it must be changed. We can move the handle to around 70% or we can enter an accurate value in keyframe velocity window. So for the outgoing velocity, enter 70% for influence. Okay, great. Now I want to animate circle 2 shape. So press the U key. Let's go to frame 100. Set a keyframe for the scale property here. 
and in frame 150, increase the scale value to, for example, 300. Okay, now let's convert all these keyframes to easy ease. We need to change the velocity for this second and third keyframes. So let's switch to graph editor window. Select left handle of the second keyframe and drag it until we get to a number around 70. And for the third keyframe, drag the right handle until we get to a number around 70. Now we have a nice and smooth transition in this curve. Let's see what we have so far. So move the work area and handle to frame 150. And play a RAM preview. Okay, awesome. Now I want to offset some of these keyframes, so select all layers and press the U key. I think it's better to move the third and the fourth keyframes of the BG circle to the right. I want it to play a little later. So let's move them to frame, for example, 110. Okay. For circle 1, I think it's better to move the first keyframe of the start to the left to play it a little earlier. So move it to frame 100. And also move the second start keyframe to 125 to finish it a little earlier. Yes. And let's move the last keyframe of the BG circle to frame 150. Let's check it. Okay. Now I want to change the scale keyframes, so let's move the last keyframe to frame 140 to make it thinner faster. Okay, great. And also let's move the stroke with the last keyframe to frame, for example, 125. In fact, I want it to get bigger faster. Okay, great. Maybe it's not a bad idea to animate offset property for this circle one. So let's find offset. Yes, here it is. In frame 100, set a keyframe for offset property. And in frame around 125 or 126, we can change it to 90 degrees. Or maybe even more, maybe 180 is a better value. Yes, great. Now convert both keyframes to easy ease. And for the first keyframe, change the influence for outgoing velocity to 70%. Okay, now let's see a run preview. Great. Okay, now I want to add markers. So deselect all layers. Let's go to frame 0. Press Alt and the Start keys on your notepad and type in here. Let's find the second keyframes. Yes, they are on frame 80. So deselect all layers and add a stop marker here. An exit frame is 100, so Alt and the Start key and type out. And the last keyframe is 150, so let's add end marker here. And finally, trim this comp now. Okay, great. Now I want to add an adjustment layer. So rename it to Effects. And let's apply a color balance HLS effect to this layer. Now let's go to a few frames forward. And by changing the hue parameter, we can change the color immediately. Okay, great. Let's disable this effect for now. Okay, now I want to use this transition with two footage, so in project panel, let's create another composition. Rename it to circles render. Leave all the settings as they are. Okay, now drag circles composition inside circles render composition. Let's move it a few frames forward. You can see this composition with all markers. Okay, now we can add time remapping effect, so right click and choose time. Enable time remapping effect. And let's add two keyframes at a stop and out markers. Now you can change the speed of this transition by moving these keyframes. As you can see, this transition appears between frame 75 to 155, but we can move the second keyframe to the left to make it to play faster. 
Now, as you can see, it's too fast. And you can do this for the exit section as well. Okay, great. Let's undo these changes. Double click on project window. Let's select two images, for example, this one. And maybe this one. Yes. Drag them over the make a new folder button. Rename it to footage. Now drag these two images into timeline. Move top image under out marker. And cut the bottom layer in out marker by pressing the alt and close bracket keys. This bottom image is too big. Yes. Use fit to come with option to fit it inside the composition window. And also for the top one, let's fit it as well. Okay, let's check it. Great. Now we can add another level of animation. For example, let's animate the scale property for these two footage. Let's set a keyframe at marker. And let's go to the time of the in marker and set a keyframe at current scale value. And when you go forward, I think it's better to make this image smaller. So let's change the scale value to 25 here. It's not a bad idea to start this scale with a few frames offset. For example, let's move the first keyframe to 85. Now select both keyframes and convert them to easy ease. And for the first one, change the influence of the outgoing velocity to 70%. Let's move the second keyframe to frame 150. Let's check it again. Or even sooner, maybe 125. Yes, great. Now for the top image, load the scale property. Set a keyframe at the out marker. And at the end marker, add a keyframe as well. And for the first keyframe, let's enter 100%. Now select both keyframes and convert them to easy ease. And this time, I want to change the influence incoming velocity for the last keyframe. So in graph editor, move this handle to the left around 70. Or you can enter an accurate number in keyframe velocity window for influence of incoming velocity. Enter 70%. Let's scrub in timeline to see the result. Maybe it's better to reverse the animation. So let's change the first keyframe to 25. Okay, nice result. So let's see a run preview. Press the N key here. And press the B key here to move the work area start handle to this frame before the end marker. Okay, great. We have successfully finished this transition as well. Now let's organize the project window. Select all items and drag them over the make a new folder button and rename it to circles. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. If you like to learn how to create more professional transitions, I highly recommend you to visit our portfolio here on the Skillshare, and I'm sure you will learn super professional techniques to create complex transitions. Okay, thank you so much, and see you soon.